hey, if you're looking to start a vending machine business and you might need a set of financial projections for a potential investor or maybe a lender, uh, then you've come to the right place because we have created a financial projection template built specifically for vending machine businesses. And I'm going to walk you through how to use this template today. Uh, I put a link to the template down in the description of the video below. So why don't you go down and grab that uh, link and uh, then you can grab the template and follow along. Um, and we'll walk through how to fill this out for your specific vending machine business so that you can produce a, a set of quality financial projections for your investors and lenders. And uh, before I get too far into it, a little bit about me, I'm Adam Huxima, I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub, and over the last decade, we've helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs create financial projections for investors and lenders. And so today, really excited to dive into our vending machine template and, and walk you through how to use it. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So here we're kind of starting with the end in mind. This is our at a glance tab. So after you have entered in all of your projection assumptions, you're gonna get this profit and loss at a glance, uh, you're going to get some nice um, per vending machine unit data, so kind of some summary data, KPIs, um, and then some nice graphs and charts, different key ratios that you might need. And you're also going to have a five-year cash flow summary report, a five-year income statement summary, five-year balance sheet summary, and then the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet all broken down by month as well. So you have that annual summary data, but also the monthly detail if you need it. So that's the end. Let's uh, do a little bit of work in order to get there though. So let's go back um, to our input assumptions tab here. And so we've got uh, our company name, Vending Machine Empire. We're gonna start here in January. And let's say you're gonna put in $100,000 of your own money as a personal investment. Maybe you have other investors, you can add in additional investors here as well. Um, we're saying, hey, we're gonna start with $10,000 worth of initial inventory. And then uh, the amount of inventory carried as a percentage of sales. We probably don't want that to be zero because we're going to have inventory in our vending machine. So maybe let's say that's going to be 25% um, is what we're what we're holding on hand. Actually, it probably makes more sense to be, let's say, say it's 200. So if we have 200% of our monthly sales held as inventory, what that would essentially mean is that each vending machine is going to turn over its inventory every other month or 50% of the inventory will be purchased each month is kind of the, the way that will be set up. So Next, we can enter in our different categories of fixed assets. So I just put in some different possible types of vending machines, so drinks, snacks and candy, and non-perishable items. Of course, you can change these. Uh, any cell that's in blue, you can change. So we've also got furniture, fixtures and equipment, vehicles and buildings and improvements. And so what we've got up here initially here is, uh, this is kind of at the corporate level. So again, this is a vending machine empire, right? So we're imagining that, hey, we're gonna have this warehouse, so this corporate office and a warehouse where we, um, store our inventory, maybe store new vending machines that we're getting ready to, to put into service. And we have, uh, we've, we've bought this facility for $200,000 in month 25. So <clears throat> we aren't buying this on day one because we need to grow into it. And so that's why um, you have the ability to put in the purchase month of any of these fixed assets. Now on month one, we are actually gonna need a truck. So we've put in a truck for $50,000 that we are gonna assume that, that we're buying because we'll need a truck to deliver the vending machines to their locations. All right, so now we're getting to our vending machine input table. And so the way, at least I was thinking about how I would fill this model out for my vending machine empire, I would put the, um, basically the address or the customer as the name here. So let's say our first customer here is we've got 123 Main Street, there's an office building. They said, yep, you can go ahead and put one vending machine in our office building. And so uh, it's, a, it's a drink machine. And we're saying, okay, with this customer, we just have one building that's serviced, just one office building, and we just have one machine uh, that is in the building. And now here we can say, is the machine purchased or leased? And so I'm gonna say this first one is leased because we're just getting started. We thought, hey, we'll lease one machine and see how it works. So. We just leased a machine, which has blacked out these other assumptions uh, because it's leased. We're saying we're going to lease that on month one. And it's a 10-year lease, so 120 payments, and uh, it's $300 a month for the lease. Okay, so then for the next, our next customer, let's say we've got a university, and they have 10, they've allowed us to put in vending machines in 10 of their different buildings, and on average, each building uh, has two vending machines. So maybe this is 10 different dorm facilities and each one has two vending machines per dorm. And with this situation, we are saying, hey, we're going to purchase these machines. So we've selected purchase and the average purchase price per machine is $7,000. We think that useful life is 20 years and the salvage cost or the scrap, the scrap value after that 20 years is 700 bucks. 
and we're saying month three is when when we're going to be purchasing those uh, those 20 machines because it's 10 buildings, two machines in each, so 20 machines. And now here we're, we've built in the ability to add financing or a loan for a specific set of machines. So what we did here is I took the 7,000 times 0.75 to give us 75%, uh, basically 75% financing um, uh, for those machines. So for each machine, we're getting a loan for $5,250 or 75% of the value of the machine. And we're going to have to come up with the other 20% ourselves as, as equity. Interest rate is 8% and it's a 10 year loan. And so now it really follows the same pattern here with the rest of these. I've just put in different um, different types of vending machines, different numbers of buildings served um, with each customer and different numbers of machines uh, at, each, at each facility. And then lastly on this page, we can put in just a working capital loan. So let's say we got an SBA uh, working capital loan to kind of help us out with some of the initial startup costs, maybe even uh, to cover some of the uh, uh, initial equity position, I guess, with that financing that we need to come up with. All right, now let's move on to our import revenue tab. So on this tab, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. It pipes in the information from the input assumptions tab. So the, the information that you shouldn't change here in gray, um, this has all been piped in from the input assumption tab. But then in blue here, we have what's the first month of revenue. So maybe we buy the machines in month one, but it takes a month for them to get installed and start generating revenue for us. And so what we've done is just had a one month delay from the month we purchased to the month first month of revenue. And then here we have entered in assumptions for the average monthly revenue per vending machine. I have a link here uh, to a source um, that says average monthly profit for a vending machine is roughly $300. So the average monthly profit is 300. We know the revenue, this is the total sales would be higher because profit would be after subtracting out your costs. Um, so, you know, I just put in kind of uh, uh, an assumption uh, for based on that data that I found um, a $450 a month for at least for this first uh, unit and then what this does in this row it multiplies hey we've got one unit one building times one unit times 450 bucks a month to give us our total monthly revenue from all units for that for that line item or that customer so you can see that for these other other customers here as well and then here we have our set of some some of our expenses um, Per machine per month so we're saying hey it's going to cost us 90 bucks per month uh, to fill the machine and what i did i use percentages for a lot of this as well so there's equations i took the revenue for the month per unit times this 0.2 or 20 percent so basically we're saying our our product cost in the machine is 20 percent um, of sales and then we've got direct labor of cost per month per machine so the assumption here is that uh, hey, it's going to take a person to go out and fill the machines and service the machines, and so we're assuming $10 per month for that. And then rent and utilities per month. So you may need to rent space from the uh, from the, the landlord, right? So that is one option. You might have a fixed dollar amount of rent per unit. You might also have a revenue share. So if you wanted to, let's say the revenue share is you're going to share 20% uh, of sales with the landlord. Again, what you could do in that case is just say equals, and you want to take the, the I'm sorry, you'd want to take this, the monthly revenue per machine times 0.2, which could be the 20% revenue share. And, and there you go, there, there's your revenue share cost, which is kind of equivalent to rent, right? All right, <clears throat> and then if there's any taxes, I mean, you can zero these things out. You don't have to have a, a number in here, but if you have any taxes that you'd have to pay um, per machine, you can enter that in here as well. So that is everything on the input revenue and cost of goods sold tab. You do have the ability to increase your revenue, um, your annual increase um, over time. So you may increase your prices or you may just expect that the, it's used more, that the machine is used more over time. And so we can increase that by you know a percentage and maybe your expenses are gonna increase as well. So we can increase our expenses there as well. And that will then project our total revenue. And you can see how this kind of builds in over time as we add new customers with new machines and service and see the revenue being calculated here and coming into play. All right, and then on our input expenses tab, what we can do here is uh, a couple different things. So we can um, have expenses that are a percentage of revenue. So credit card processing fees are a good example. People are probably paying with a credit card or at least some percentage of them are paying with a credit card uh, in your vending machines. And so we have uh, 
a percentage of total revenue as, a, as an expense, and we're saying that's 3%. So let's say, you know, all of your machines take credit cards and you think, you know, a high percentage of people, customers are going to be using credit cards instead of change or cash, um, then you might want that 3%. If you think, you know, only half of our customers are gonna use credit cards, half are gonna use cash, you might wanna lower this to, let's say 1.5% uh, of total revenue because only half of your customers are, are gonna get charged that 3% credit card processing fee. Then we can also have expenses that are fixed. So maybe our accounting service is $300 a month and it's a fixed, it's a fixed fee. We can also have some expenses on a per building serviced basis and a per vending machine basis. So I put in fuel, uh, fuel cost, and tied it to the number of buildings serviced. So you figure you're going to be having, uh, you know, whether it's you or, or a team member that's going to be driving around to different buildings and servicing those machines. And so we've got a fuel cost per building. Um, and then on an insurance level, that insurance may be priced on a per machine basis. So we've got $5 worth of insurance per machine. Then we have a few more expenses. So maybe rent for the corporate office, phone and internet, utilities for the corporate office here as fixed expenses. And then lastly, on our salaries tab, we have a CEO salary and a warehouse and logistics manager with different salaries. And we're, we have different months that these salaries can start. So we're saying maybe you as a CEO, you're not going to take up any pay for the first year. And so month 13, the beginning of year two, you start taking a salary. Um, but maybe the warehouse and logistics manager, we have starting salary right away, right in month one. Then you have the ability to provide an annual raise percentage here as well. And then it brings us back to our Adagwains tab. And so um, we're, we're done. And uh, hopefully um, this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions about how to fill this out um, or just about a vending machine business startup in general, uh, leave a comment down in the video comment section below. That way, if you ask your question, I'm sure other people have the same questions we can answer for everybody. Um, but also feel free to reach out with specific questions to uh, support at projectionhub.com and we'd be happy to uh, answer your questions as best we can there as well. All right, with that, best of luck as you start your business. Thanks.